Hey everybody, Mr. Math Blog here, and this is the beginning of chapter four. So the last chapter we did uh, lots of multiplying and, and partial products, and we did it by regrouping, by drawing rectangles, and we did other methods also. So this one is, is the opposite of multiplying. We're going to be doing um, quotients, which is dividing. So this lesson here um, uh, is estimating quotients uh, uh, by using some multiples, okay? So our common core strand is we're going to use place value understanding the properties of operation to perform multi-digit arithmetic. Okay, well that's that's you know no big deal. And so how can we use multiples to estimate quotients? Okay, and that's how what we're going to do in this one right here. So let's go back and and uh, let's solve each division problem and write the related multiplication sentence. Okay, so 32 divided by 8. Okay, so 32 divided by 8 is what? In other words, 8 times what number equals 32? And hopefully you guys know that's 4. Okay, so let's answer this second part. So it says, and write uh, the related multiplication sentence. Okay, well that just means, uh, just do the reverse. So this times this is going to equal this. Okay, so 8 times 4 equals 32. Alright, 72 divided by what equals 8? Okay, if you think backwards, 8 times what number equals 72? Okay, and it's going to be 9. So 8 times 9 equals 72. Okay, all right, 42 divided by 6 equals what? Or 6 times what number equals 42? And hopefully you guys know it's 7. So 7 goes there, and 6 times 7 equals 42. All right, 30 divided by 5 uh, equals what? Or 5 times what number equals 30? Okay, so that one's going to be 6 right there. Okay, so those are just multiples or multiplying right there. And so multiplying and dividing are kind of inverse uh, multiple, uh, inverse mathematical operations of each other. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, try a problem here. So uh, a farmer grew 110 pumpkins, and she will be packing them in, uh, uh, with 8 pumpkins in each box. So how many boxes will there be? Okay, so what this is, you guys, is we're going to use the multiples to estimate this. Okay, and the multiple, a multiple of a number is the product of a number and counting numbers. And what are counting numbers? Counting numbers are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Okay, so you just start at 1. And then so what we're going to do is uh, do 8 times 1, 8 times 2, 8 times 3. So those are going to be the multiples of 8. Okay, so the multiples of 8, 8 times 1, 8 times 2, 8 times 3, 8 times 4. And we're going to keep doing that. So we're going to estimate uh, what is 110 divided by uh, 8. Okay, so here we go. So think what number uh, multiplied by 8 is about 110. Okay. So I just slid it up there. Okay, so step one, let's list the multiples of 8 until we reach 110 or greater. Okay, so we have a big table right here. Okay, and here's all the counting numbers. And I, I did the counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, and so what we're going to do is do 8 times 1. Well, 8 times 1 is 8. Okay, uh, 8 times 2. 8 times 2, I'm going to put 16 right here. 8 times 3 is going to be 24 right here. 8 times 4 is going to be 32 right there. Okay, so there's the first um, four multiples of 8. Let's list the next four multiples of 8. What's 8 times 5? Okay, and what we can do is just keep going plus 8. Okay, if this is 8 times 4 is 32, then add one more 8, and that's going to get me 40. So 8 times 5, add another 8, that's going to get me the next multiple. So 8 times 6 is 48. Add another 8. 48 plus 8 is 56. 8 times 7 is 56. Uh, 8 times 8, I, I know that one. That one's 64. Okay, actually, I know them all, you guys, but uh, in case you're uh, struggling with that, that's, and you just keep adding 8, okay? So 8 times 9, 64 plus 8, just add 8 more. 8 times 9 is 72. 8 times 10 is 8 with a 0. And then 8 times 11 is going to be 88. 8 times 12 is going to be 88 plus 8 which is 96, okay? 8 times 13, let's add 8 to this. So if I add 8 to 96, that's going to get me 104. And then add 8 to that, look, I'm getting close to 110. Add 8 to 104, that's going to get me 112 right there, okay? So if I add that right there. Okay, so now I can see 110 is somewhere between the multiples of 104 and 112. 
Okay, so let's answer the question now here. So let's find the multiples of 8 that uh, 110 is between. Okay, well, 13 times 8 is 104. 14 times 8 is 112. And 110 is between 104 and 112. So I know 110 divided by 8 is going to be somewhere between uh, 13 times 8 and 14 times 8, because 13 times 8 gets me 104, and 14 times 8 gets me 112. So 108 divided by 8 is somewhere between the 13 and 14 right there, okay? And so since 110 is closer to 112, then 110 divided by 8 is going to be closer to 14 than it is going to be to 13. So it's about 14, okay? Hope that makes sense on that one. So there's going to be about 14 boxes uh, to uh, load all those pumpkins in, okay? All right, so I don't know about you, but it is October for me, and it's getting close, and we got, uh, we call it a knucklehead pumpkin sitting out in front of our house. It's got a bunch of bumps all over it. All right, so um, when estimating a quotient, how do we know which two numbers it's between? And so explain. Okay, and so I'm going to explain, and then we'll talk about it using the last example. So uh, we uh, go ahead and list the multiples of the divisor. In our last case, it was 8, and then we find the two multiples of the divisor that the dividend, the dividend is uh, the number that we're trying to get close to, is between. Okay, those two numbers that we multiply by the divisor are the two numbers that estimate is between. So for example, right here, you guys, here's all the multiples of 8 right here. Okay, so then we list all the multiples of the divisor 8, because we're dividing it by 8 right there. There's my divisor right there. This is the dividend right here, and this is the divisor. And then, um, and then we find uh, uh, the, the two numbers that the dividend is in between. So this 110 was between 104 and 112 right there. And then those two numbers that we multiplied by the divisor, so that we multiplied 8 times 13 and times 14, um, are the two numbers that the estimate is between. So this, this uh, quotient is between 13 and 14, okay? That's what all these fancy words say, okay? Don't worry about it too much. This is the dividend. This is the divisor right here. And the quotient is uh, this whole 110 divided by 8 right there, okay? All right, so try this, you guys. List the next nine multiples of 10, okay? The nine the multiples. So I'm going to go, there's 10 times 1, 10 times 2. So 10 times 3 would be 30. Then we go 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then you just go out there. Uh, make sure you go out there for the next 10. So is that 10 of them right there or the next nine? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's the next multiples of, uh, the ni next nine multiples of 10, okay? All right, let's try it again with this one. Uh, list the next eight multiples of 100. Okay, so 100 goes 100, 200. Then it's going to be 300, 400, 500, 600. Just make sure you go out eight more times. And so that took me out to 1,000 right there, okay? So there's the next multiples of 100 right there. Okay, easy enough, isn't it? Okay, let's estimate 196 divided by 4. All right, so... Think of uh, uh, what number times 4 is around 196. Because remember, this is the, remember uh, division and multiplication are inverse operations of each other. So 196 divided by 4 is saying the same thing as what number times this uh, divisor will get me this number right here. So what number times 4 is about 196. So let's go ahead and list the next six multiples of 4. Okay, so I'm just going to keep adding 4. Okay, here's 4 times 1, here's 4 times 2, here's 4 times 3, here's 4 times 4. If you don't know your multiples, just keep going plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. So I'm going to do that 6 times right there. Okay, so there's my next multiples of, of 4. Here's 5 times 4, here's 6 times 4, 7 times 4, 8 times 4, 9 times 4, 10 times 4. Okay, at this rate, you guys, to get up to 196, I'm going to have a big old list and fill up this page. So let's try another strategy. Are, are those multiples even close to 196? No way. So let's try this. Let's think if we multiply 4 by multiples of 10. See, here we're multiplying it by multiples of 1. 4 times 1, 4 times 2. We're just jumping up 1, 4 times 1, and all the counting numbers. So let's, let's list um, uh, all the multiples of 10. Okay, and the products will get to 196 much faster than multiplying them by multiples of 1. So let's multiply uh, 4 by all the multiples of 10. So 10 times 4 is 40. So tw the next multiple of 10 is 20. 20 times 4 is 80. The next multiple of, 
of 10 is going to be 30. So 30 times 4, okay, what's 3 times 4? 3 times 4 is 12, so we add a 0, so it's going to be 120. All right, uh, 40 times 4, what's 4 times 4? That's uh, 16, so add a 0, so this is going to be 160. Okay, and then uh, uh, 5 times 4 is 20, so we add a 0 because it's 50 times 4, so that's going to be 200. Okay, now can you see 196 is in between 100? 60 and 200. Okay, so let me shrink that up a little bit right there. All right, so the quotient is between 40 and 50. Okay, and 50 times 4 is closest to 196. So 196 divided by 4 is about 50. Okay, I hope that makes sense, you guys, and take care, everybody.